We said during the Vikings head coaching search, which is still ongoing, by the way, that Jim Harbaugh, Michigan, maybe 1% chance. And we thought that, hey, Harbaugh going back to the NFL, that the Raiders makes a lot of sense, even though they're apparently circling in on Josh McDaniels because they saw up close and personal in that division what happened a couple years ago. Back in the day. But, uh, again, Harbaugh, Vikings, 1% chance. It wasn't zero. And sometimes 1% chances come through. I I based my entire poker career off of that. But... Harbaugh Watch 2022. Who's keeping tabs of Ziggy's private jet? Is it going to Ann Arbor? Well, I know. But Chris Thompson, go. Updated Jim Harbaugh story. Source, South said Vikings late in past week asked for and received permission with Michigan to talk to Harbaugh, and they spoke to him Saturday afternoon. Source called it exploratory conversations with both sides gauging interest. So there's a couple things here. Michigan could have said no. Sure. You're like, you sign a contract, you have to honor it. Even though it would be the first college coaching contract that's ever been like, hey, honor this or whatever. Uh, Secondly, yeah, you could put out rumors out there to leverage Michigan into giving you an extension, getting all the monies. He he actually did take a pay cut uh, last year after the Rona hit, gave it to uh, support staff, keep them on payroll. It was a really great gesture, but he wants to get paid. After going 12-2, and two, beating Ohio State, getting a college football playoff, got lit up by Georgia. Who cares, right? But, so, I actually, you know, think about this. You There there are ways where you can put rumors out there where it gets the job done with Michigan, right? And you see this with college coaches all the time. Sometimes it's other schools. Sometimes it's the NFL. But it gets them paid. But, having a formal interview with an NFL team where that NFL team got permission from your school and it's so out in the open or a, a, a not a, a, a kept secret that it gets reported by the media, uh, that's pretty far down the line. Like, that's almost across the goal line because you don't want things to affect recruiting. Like, right, so uh, if Harbaugh was going to stay in Michigan, he didn't want anything where some of those four- and five-star recruits would vacillate, right, potentially dip. Also, this could hurt long-term recruiting because class of next season or two years down the road, it's like, you know, I want to play for Michigan, but if Harbaugh every single year, every time we win a couple games because I'm a great recruit, uh, going to be flirting with the NFL, maybe I don't want to go there, All right? So, like I said, this seems pretty far down the line, so pretty amazing stuff. And our guy Thor, Thor Nystrom, Roto World, he put this out. And there are a lot of people who are naysayers on Jim Harbaugh. Well, he's a tough ass. Oh, he's exactly like Zimmer. Now. Now, the difference between Harbaugh and Zimmer is that Harbaugh wins. And you can act like that when you win. It's just a fact of life, right? And here's what he said. If you think hiring Jim Harbaugh as your coach is a bad idea, you don't know football. Harbaugh took over a 1-11 Stanford and 5-7 and Michigan and had each humming very quickly. Also, he tur- turned around San-, San Diego. Not San Diego State. The, the small private college, San Diego, uh, turned them to a powerhouse. His quarterback uh, at San Diego, Josh Johnson. The immortal one. The guy who's played for every single NFL team, it seems like. Mm. Uh, Also, Harbaugh, he made NFC title in three out of four seasons. First three seasons in the NFL uh, with Niners after they were 6-10 and when he got their 10 straight losing seasons. I mean, what else do you want? Took the Niners to the Super Bowl. I I mean, they made a comeback in the Super Bowl against his brother thanks to the power outage because uh, I think the Ravens were up 28-6 to or something ridiculous like that. Yeah, Ravens almost blew a 28-6 to lead. Crazy. Uh, Thomason also added in, if Harbaugh leaves for Vikings, he would owe Michigan a $1.5 million buyout. Ipso facto, the Vikings would owe Michigan a $1.5 million buyout. Harbaugh signed an extension, blah, blah, blah. So it's not as big as you would think. That's what she said. Like, we're not talking about a eight-figure, like, $10 or $12 million buyout like it would take for a, a Nick Saban. Uh, because he redid his deal because he was on pretty thin ice after the 2020 season before uh, Michigan had this meteoric 2021 season that the buyout... It's very manageable. Like, money is not going to be an issue here because, I mean, if the Wilfs want to get their guy, they have a a dude who resurrected Stanford, who resurrected Michigan, went to the college football playoff, uh, has had great success in the NFL, has actually gone to a Super Bowl. I mean, the Wilfs are going to pay it. One and a half million buyout, nine, ten million a year. Okay, done and done. And the fact that he does have a working relationship two years in San Francisco with Koisi Adolfo Metza, all for it. All for it because you know initially I was a little mute, uh, muted on Harbaugh because I didn't think it was going to happen. It's like, hey, I would love to hire Saban or hey, I would love to trade for Belichick for a seventh round pick. But now it, this actually seems like it's happening. So we got to get our khakis pressed and clean, man. Go ahead, but you can't argue with the results. And 
like we said in the earlier video, um, some of his former players, San Francisco, um, ha didn't have some great things to say about him, say that he wears on you, say that he wears guys out because he has high standards. And there's a difference between having high standards for your players and not for yourself and throwing everyone under the bus and not taking responsibility and having high standards for the team, the organization as a whole. And, and like we said, if he's the same dude seven, eight years down the line, no, you have to grow and evolve. And I think that he has taken you know, um, dealing with millennial generation Z or whatever at Michigan, taking that to heart. So I think that he could and should relate to some of the younger players and younger team leaders. So, I mean, I'm for it. Like if they can land Jim Harbaugh, even though it's reported that uh, D'Amico Ryan's still a hot candidate, uh, they're, they're apparently going to do a second interview with Kevin O'Connell. But I mean, if Harbaugh offer Harbaugh, because I think if you offer Harbaugh, he's not going to say no because I, because with recruiting, this has to be a clean break. Like this is not going to go to two or three interviews. This is not going to drag out for a week. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen fast. Or if it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen fast either. But it's very, very interesting right now. But your thoughts on our thoughts. The latest on Hardball Watch 2022. Dun, dun, dun. Got to get some theme music, even though we're not about that production value, man. Uh, but, yeah, let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Subscribe for Daily Vikings Takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But until next time, Skull, production value.